Ah, Godspeed to you. Yes, the entire story of God is contained in every verse of the Bible, but no more is that true than in John 9. This is the story of the man who was blind from birth, couldn't see. Jesus uh, made clay, put it over his eyes with clay and spit and mud, and put it over his eyes, told him to wash in the pool at Siloam. And uh, anyway, he could see. So the Pharisees got all up in arms, and they really, really had, you know, an issue because they just grilled him, and finally they said, this man is not of God. Jesus is not of God. And other Pharisees said, well, how can he do these miracles if he's not of God? You know, to make a blind man see from birth, this has never been done before. And um, finally, um, they asked him, and uh, they said, well, this man, Jesus, does not honor the Sabbath day. He's not of God. You may say you're of God, they said to Jesus, but we are of Moses. And they said to the blind man, you may, who could see again, you may, you are his disciple. You may be Jesus' disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. So they kicked him out. The man received sight and they cast him out. You understand the spirit there? They saw a miracle of Jesus Christ and they rejected it immediately and cast it out and denounced it. But what takes place after that is the most telling thing about Jesus Christ that you're ever going to hear. He said, when the blind man who could now see is cast out of the temple, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found out, he said to him, does thou believe on the son of God? Meaning on me, the son of God. He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that, has, that talks with you. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped Jesus. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see, might, which, which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. For judgment I am come into this world. To give sight to the blind that they might see and to blind those who have sight. The Pharisees had sight, but they were blinded. The miracle was taken away from them. The Messiah was taken away from them. Later on in um, Romans 11, Paul says, you know, the Jews were blinded so they could crucify Jesus. And so this, that the victory could go forth. But Jesus says something very curious to the man that he made, that he gave eyesight to, whom the Pharisees cast out. People forget, as soon as the Pharisees saw that miracle and questioned the guy, they couldn't stand it. Their pride would not allow it. They kicked him out. The Pharisees represent, folks, the world. The world is more afraid, as we've gone through this before, they're more afraid of miracles than anything else in the world. It frightens them when things defy science. It frightens them when, when you know, you defy the odds by walking along and not conforming to their uh, idiotic ways. Not because they're idiotic, because they put pressure on you like death, harassment, whatever it is but that you just walk on and that you have a life and that you're happy and that doors open for you and that you prosper and all those things are happening and it drives them insane because that is nothing short of a daily miracle. Since they feel like they have the numbers and they're lined up against you and everyone must kowtow when they see people like Jesus who are free and Jesus' disciples who are free, they cannot handle it. So they spend all their time denouncing the Bible kicking prayer out of school. Anything that has to do with Jesus is gone. Nothing that has to do with Buddhism, nothing that has to do with Hinduism, nothing that has to do with Islam, Judaism, any of the rest of them. When it's connected to Jesus, they want it gone. They act like it's 
you know, across the board, but it's not because, you see, that's the thing that really scares them, just as it did in the days of the Pharisees. When they said, I am come for judgment, which means I will make those who see blind. Those who think they know what's going on blind. I will also give you the power of invisibility because they'll be blind to your movement. They can't see the blind man. They can only cast him out. They could not put him to death because they couldn't see straight forward to do that because they were judged and found wanting. The judgment was already cast on the Pharisees and on the Jews in general at that time. They were blinded, but they were judged unworthy to receive Messiah. Just as when Messiah comes to, I mean, taking out of the Jew-Gentile context, anybody who rejects Messiah, that is a judgment against them. And they reject Messiah not simply by rejecting him um, overtly, him directly, but by rejecting those in Messiah, they reject Messiah, understand? So if anyone who believes on Messiah, if they are rejected, then Messiah is rejected. It becomes a judgment upon them that they are then made, at that moment, blinded. The judgment is blindness. What happens to someone who is made blind? Well, they still think they can see. They still think they know what's going on but they just bumble around, you know, uh, things don't quite work out for them. They, if you like to put it in the vernacular we have, they become, um, if you will, they become tagged. We tag them by their, by their casting out of us. They are instantly tagged. And then from that time forward, you know, things like I say, if you were going from a sighted man to a blind man, you start bumbling around. You're not exactly on your game anymore. And uh, this is Jesus sending himself out through his disciples. In other words, Jesus comes as judgment through his people. You, my friend, are a judgment against those of the world who reject God, which is those of the world. Because... To join the world system, to be initiated in the world system, it's not just, you know, an act of depravity or perversion. It is rejection of God and Messiah. It's rejection of God. It's blindness. So when they say, oh, our eyes were opened when we were initiated, I was blind, but now I see, the answer is to them, no, they had seen, they rejected and now they were made blind by none other than Jesus and no one else. Buddha doesn't make you blind. Allah and, uh, you know, uh, Muhammad doesn't make you blind. The angels don't make you blind, good or bad. The only one that blinds is God, Yahweh, and in this case, Jesus, or Yahweh, you know, same, same thing, you know, in the flesh. But Jesus comes to judge and blind he blinds through his people. For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. When one rejects or casts out one of you, i.e., in this story, you are the blind man who was made to see. You were blind from birth. We all were. Jesus made us see. Then we could see the whole world. Jesus also, in this chapter, <clears throat> which is very important, sees himself and explains that he is the light of the world. And... Um, As long as I am in the world, he says, I am the light of the world. So there is light in him and nowhere else. He is the light of the world and the world is not lit by any other source. Thus, if you reject Messiah, you reject Yahweh, you reject creator, you are made blind 
But then they say falsely, I was blind, but now I see when they become initiated into the, uh, the sorry, pathetic way of the world. They become blind thinking they see. But then to top it off, to make them even more blind, if that's possible, this is where they start bumbling. This is the judgment part. When they reject Jesus, how do they do that? By casting one of you out. What happened in the story of the blind man in John 9? What did the Pharisees do? They knew it was a miracle. They knew that it was not of this world. They knew it came from God. They denied that. And what did they do? They cast the man out. They cast him out. And when Jesus heard they had cast him out, when he found him, he says, do you believe in the Son of God? He said, yes, he worshipped him. His eyes were thus opened. Just like there is a second death, folks, there is a second life. Your eyes are open when you know Messiah is Messiah. And when you worship him, that's the second sight. That's another opening. That's the, the, the second life, if you will. The first <clears throat> is eating of the leaves of the tree of life. The second is eating the fruit of the tree of life. The second is eternal life. The first is a waking up and anointing, much like someone that knows Jesus is Jesus, maybe worship. But then the second is the baptism by fire, where you are sealed by the Holy Ghost, made one of Jesus' own. You belong to him now. That's called the second life, or at least I'm calling it that at this point. Just like there's a second death, there's a second life, which is the confirmation of your faith. The confirmation of the, when the blind man saw, that was the first life. Life was breathed in, he could now see. But when he worshiped Jesus, he got the second life. He was now eternal. Not cast out at all, but brought in. It was the casting out. Thus, we can also discern from this that if one is not cast out, he cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ, period. If one is not cast out from the Christian church, he cannot be a disciple of Jesus. Because the Christian church today is like the Pharisees of yesterday. So that's the process. When your eyes are opened, and I can attest to this because this happened to me. When my eyes were open and I refused to bow down to them, but rather bowed to Jesus, I was cast out when I gave them my test. And what, what did they, how did they cast me out? Because I gave my testimony of what Jesus did for me and what Jesus is telling me. They said, no, that's not happening. Please be quiet. I would not. They cast me out. The second thing is that I had the baptism by fire where I was sealed by the Holy Ghost forever and ever. But that could not occur until I was actually totally cast out. And when I was cast out, then be, and the proof of this is then began, you know, a ministry on earth that I began, which could not have happened until I was cast out. In fact, being cast out was a big part of my initiation into Christ. What would I choose? The church and being liked? Or being cast out by the church and having Jesus? Uh, the church gave me two choices. You can have us or you can have Jesus. And, th and this was the same thing in every church we visited. There is no exception across the entire of America. Everyone that goes to church and is in that bondage, they, they are not brethren at this point. They must be cast out. And I don't, I've never seen an exception. I've seen people begging and screaming and crying at me saying, Z, please don't judge me. Please don't say that. And I say, brother, you know damn well you can't even pray with me because you know what I would pray. And you know you're afraid they would hear you. No, I don't mean God. Your friends. So long as they have you by the balls like that, you're uh, in bondage. You're blind. You don't know what I know. You don't see what I see. When you talk Jesus and I talk Jesus, we're talking me experiencing him. 
you just theoretical. 